can. She can, she can, she can. Yeah, yeah, she can. Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kaduri, aka Dr. May, popularly referred to as the Celebrity Shrink, is a multiple award-winning mental health physician, advocate and coach. She is the medical director and psychiatrist-in-chief at Pinnacle Medical Services, Nigeria's leading and foremost psychology and mental health clinic. Dr. Kaduri is a dynamic consultant neuropsychiatrist and a fellow of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, FMC Psych, with almost 20 years experience as a practicing physician. She is a trained and certified rational, emotive and cognitive behavioral therapist from Albert Ellis Institute, New York, USA. She is a recognized radio and television guest psychiatrist and psychotherapist. She also contributes to articles published in magazines and newspapers. She is the only Nigerian with the 14 Ps, physician, psychiatrist, psychologist, psychotherapist, practitioner, NLP, BFP, BFB, NFB, public speaker, published author, producer, movies, proficient coach, parent, philanthropist, people-oriented, public health advocate and passionate about God and life. The founder of Pinnacle Health Radio, Africa's number one online health radio and a non-for-profit organization, Pinnacle Medical Speak Out Initiative, which is geared towards creating mental health literacy in Nigeria and beyond. The executive producer of award-winning movies, Pepper Soup, focused on drug abuse and Little Drops of Happy, focused on depression, postpartum depression and suicide, and creator of the most innovative mental health app in Africa, How Body. As a forerunner in the practice of mental health and other novel therapy techniques in Nigeria, she continues to be the most sought-after psychiatrist and psychotherapist in Nigeria and beyond. An alumni of the U.S. State Department, International Visitors Leadership Program IVLP 2017 and Aspen Fellow 2021. She is a member of several professional organizations. Her driving force is to leave, to learn and to impact generations positively. When not working as a physician, she loves to tour the world, work on disruptive innovations, and talk fashion. Dr. Memuna Kaduri is a life coach, an innovator, and she is married with three lovely children. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Dr. Memuna Kaduri. Good afternoon, everyone. I was already doubting, so who were they talking about? Because I don't know who were they talking about. But it's a honor to be here, and I'm going to stand on all the existing protocols. But before I go into my discussion, everything I'm going to say here today is on my social media handle. So do me a favor, show me love. Follow me on my Instagram. I am Dr. May. I a-M-D-R-M-A-Y. Frustrate my social media handlers. <laughs> Let them know that you were here. And I said, follow me on my Instagram page. And let her call me and tell me, you were bombarded with followers. 25 minutes, can't say my story. To Ezine, this is a relationship. And this relationship is a movement, and we are going to make sure it works. So Mr. Kelechi Amadiobi, I don't need to preach to you anymore. You saw my pictures. I'm good. <laughs> so I want to grace your magazine. I can pose for it. I can do it. And fashion is not a problem. <laughs> So, Mrs. Falake Shoitong, we have a service to boost your employees' performance and productivity in the workplace. We currently serve over 200,000 Nigerian employees and their families with our Employees Assistance Program. So, please take us on board. So, the Honorable Commissioner, ma'am, you heard we have an NGO, Pinnacle Medical Speaker Initiative. I'm coming, knocking, and I will show up. Trust me. 
Of course, girl, you know what is up. I'm not only about medical, I'm a polymax. Yaris or Big Brother Africa. <laughs> I can discuss current affairs. Just hook me up and I'll be there. So, to everyone here, what is my journey? And what do I want to tell you? But before I go into that, when you woke up this morning, what did you tell yourself? A lot of us might have woken up feeling blue, feeling sad, feeling unhappy, feeling good. So one statement, when you wake up every morning, ask yourself, how am I? Ask yourself, stop being angry when people don't ask you to, stop that, that statement because you haven't even asked yourself. So ask yourself, if you are good, let us be like our past president, I dare can't be. It's good. Move on. But if you aren't good, go to the next statement. What am I feeling? Anger, resentment, sadness, overwhelmed, frustrated. It could be multiple of all these emotions. The moment you know exactly what you are feeling, go to the third statement. Why am I feeling what I'm feeling? If you don't get that, you will not be able to see options because the next statement is, how can I get out of what I'm feeling? Please, if you don't get anything away from here, make sure this first statement for every morning you wake up, how am I feeling? What am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? And how can I get out of it? It helps you break boundaries. We're talking of she can do more. You can't do more if you don't know how you're doing. So I am that young girl who grew up. So my story is about the voice to empower. What is your power? Mine is my voice. That young girl who grew up in a family of 27 children. Four wives, one father. So it's very important you know this. Why? Because your voice can be silenced in such a large home. So my home was a mini community. Let me see the Edo people here. Give yourself a round of applause. We are the big heart of the nation. That little girl who grew up in Aochi in Edo State, I miss all the wives, including my mom being the first. I learned resilience. My mom is the first wife. She is still there over 48 years. She's still there. And I used to question everything growing up. Why is this? this? Why is this as soon as it? All my uncles and aunties were all living with me. Then one day my grandma said, you have a voice. Listen to that voice. That voice, you can use it to empower the world. Just listen. At my fifth, sixth birthday thereabout, I fell ill. I went to the hospital. When I woke up from my coma, Beautiful doctors and nurses taking after me, looking after me. And I, was, I would like to be a doctor. My mindset of being a doctor started at that point. That was a community in the 70s that they didn't believe in girl education. So mine was train her to be a wife for somebody and have children. Then I told my dad, I want to be a doctor. Of course, what will a dad tell a child that has just woken up from coma? Yes, you will. I said, I'm holding on to your words. You must make sure. He said, no, no matter what, everything, just make sure you get well and everything. So what did I do? I ensured I did sciences in secondary school. I ensured I did my work, did my jam, and I passed. I got into secondary school. University, rather. And in the university days, went on. When I got to my senior university days, 
I knew I wanted to be a mental health physician because as we sit on this, in this forum today, I already know, you know, in my mind, I already like 10 researchers can come out from here. The way we see it, the face masks we are using, the attitude we have exhibited, so many things because our personality. But I just felt that wasn't going to be a, a, an, an issue. So I finished. I told my family I was going to be a psychiatrist. Remember I said we had 27 children. My father called a family meeting. <laughs> How can this girl, all the money has spent in her, she wants to be a mad doctor. <laughs> and so, I told him, no, it's not going to be, I'm not going to be a mad doctor. It's a doctor that, you know, psychiatry is a message for the past, the present, and the future. He said, no, 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 you're going to be a mad doctor. Called my husband because I was already married. I have my 18-year-old daughter sitting down here in the audience. <laughs> and somehow, without influencing her, she's going to University of Carleton to read psychology. To so God be the glory. At least, even if she's not a doctor, she should be a psychologist now. At least, succession plan. <laughs> if the pinnacle, she will, she will continue with it in, 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 in whichever way it is. My husband was like, psychology, what do they do? I said, that's what I've been doing all the years you married me. So I don't understand what do you mean that what do psychologists do. But that aside, that family meeting held, they dragged my husband in. My husband said, they let her be. My father said, there's pediatrics, the women that are delivery. I said, no, I don't want that. Psychiatry is a message for the past, the present, and the future. I thought that was going to be my major challenge. I started my residency training in psychiatric hospital Yaba. It's over 110 years old, if you don't know that. Psychiatric hospital, Yaba. The one you know as Yaba left. Yaba Ibosi. But do you know what? Look at Yaba Psychiatric Hospital and look at the other side of the road before it was beautified. Who do you think had issues? <laughs> it's not people on the Yaba left. Because Yaba left is always quiet. Unless you get in there, you know what is happening. On the other side, Agbero, buses. They will frustrate you. Mother, come and buy. It is this. They are the ones. So I was there for six years. My first one week there, I met some classical patients I want to talk to you about. One came in shackles. What do I mean by shackles? It came changed because he had been in Babalao every morning. They flogged it 20 strokes of the cane to flog out the madness in him. After six months, he was brought to us. Within two weeks, this boy got better. So mental illnesses can be treatable, they are beatable, and they are manageable. Please stop the discrimination and stigma. Rule number one. The second case, on her wedding night, she was brought in. She broke down. Everybody thought because of the marriage, preparation, and all that, she broke down. But by the time she got to the hospital, the, the parents went to the uh, medical record and told them to, you know, her number. But the husband was like, she is new here. Please, we need to open a folder. But the parents went and... And then they brought one for that was, that was like a textbook. The husband said, what do you mean? Who, who owns this? Uh, my dear, she has been here. Three days later, the man came with a divorce letter, divorced her. We discharged that woman to the parents. So you see, a lot can go on in our life. You can't do more if you are not balanced. Physically and emotionally. And emotionally more important than the physical. Because when you have an injury and you are bleeding, you can easily clean it. But when you are bleeding in, nobody gets to say that shit. Except you. That's why you do yourself that favor. on checking on yourself every second. And stop waiting for the world to check on you. I've done many firsts in my life. I'm not the first doctor and I will not be the last. But the truth is, to do more, you have to be very intentional and deliberate. My facility is the first mental health and psychiatric practice on the island before others joined in. So I lead, others followed. I'm a doctor, I'm not a businesswoman. But I had to go get business skills. And I found SOCOM in 
Enterprise Development Center, and Lagos Business School. Till today, I don't know about Ineka and Banki, I still stand the only most well-read alumnus of Enterprise Development Center. I've done four courses there, back to back, all fully sponsored. From Goldman Sachs to Coca-Cola to a bank that never wanted their name to be mentioned. So you can do it. What are you doing to change your life? Being an alumni of Tony Melu Foundation, I feel that form. Yeah. I feel that form on my phone, moving from Chicago to Baltimore. On my phone. I didn't say I needed a laptop and all that. I filled it and I was chosen. We're in 2021. I'm Missy Chaos. I'm currently running two fellowships Aspen Institute and African Women Entrepreneurship Corporation. There's nothing holding you back. You have to project, you know, you have to tell yourself there are certain things you have to do. And what are those things that you have to do it? COVID happened. We are not taking that away from anyone. But the truth is, what are the opportunities within COVID that you are leveraging on? I've been writing this book for years. And when COVID happened, the lockdown made me to realize I needed to do it. I did it. I launched it July 11th, 2021. Between July 11th, 2021 to date, we have seen 17 teenagers in my center, all depressed, suicidal. Some have even tried taking their lives twice. So please... Stop telling yourself you can't do it. You can do it. It's possible. It's doable. Your tribe affects your vibes. Who is your tribe? Who makes up your tribe? People are contagious. Likewise, emotions are contagious. The easiest, fastest way to get mentally unstable is to have people with negative energy around you. So free, free to fumigate your inner circle. <laughs> Unapologetically, because your circle of influence, middle, inner, outer, your inner circle makes the best of you. And if those people are no longer serving you, fumigate. <laughs> don't, don't let anybody down you. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody preach to you that it's not possible. It is possible. It is doable. I'm going to round up with two acronyms. I found out that during the COVID era, till now, lockdown rather, till now, which we are still within the COVID, I've had to speak to various platforms nationally and internationally, over 238 as of this morning. And I always leave every room with something for you to take away. And something very relatable. Why? Because we are adults. Your attention span is very short. So what are you taking away for every time you hear Dr. May? So I'll leave you with two acronyms. One is what is holding you. And one is what will make you do more. And what is holding you? Your stress factor. Your S-T-R-E-S-S. -E -S. What is your stress factor? Have you ever asked yourself every day, what is stressing me out? What is that thing holding me down? So your first S is you, self. Self-negative talks. Self-breakdown. Self-negativity. Self-pessimism. Everything that will bring you down. Somebody has posted a video of 2017. Hey, hey she has gone to Maldives, and I'm here, I'm still in Nigeria. Ha, ah, it's not fair. Oh. Ah. I've been on a production site with somebody before who okay, came with a full box and took pictures that she was posting for three good months. In her room, take soaking gary with, without uh, um, granato and milk. Ordinary gary, soak and travel, jebu gary. You soak it, come back in the afternoon and take it. 
She was posting pictures. Everybody would like, oh, you are in Turkey. Beautiful. She'll be tagging location. I deliberately followed that that day because I wanted to know being the behaviorist in me, what will she do with these pictures? And I saw the way she was deceiving. So leave our perspire to inspire on the internet. Leave them. Leave all the randa randa when you see on the internet. People are there killing themselves. She posted those pictures consistently for three good months. And people were always thinking she was somewhere. And one day I called, I said, um, hi, you're just wanting to check. You say, ah, Dr. Me, I'm just doing... I said, but you ain't talking. I said, ah, you know now. Because she can't lie to me. So, the first, what, what can hold you down is self. The T is trauma. We've all been traumatized. If nothing has traumatized you, COVID. So, collectively, we have been traumatized. Is that trauma holding you down now? What can get you out of it? Find it. Trauma is an underlying factor that can easily make you not to do more. R is relationship. Women, we are all there. Eight out of ten patients you see in psychiatric hospital are women. Yes. I thought it would be different when I set up my private practice, but it's the same thing. Because we talk out more, we seek help more. So I feel really sad when I see our men not talking. So women, please begin to start doing more today and training our sons and stop telling them men don't cry. <laughs> men cry. Let them express their emotions. He is a human being before you decided to say, you are a girl, you are a boy. Let our men cry. Man up! Mr. Kelechi Amadiobi, I'm sorry, so I'm using you again. <laughs> if he's emotionally disturbed, now he's hearing the voice of his parents. Boy, men don't cry. Man up. Be a man. Those are the voices that will be in their heads. So please, relationship. He is economic and financial. I don't know about you, but economically, that can make you not to do more. The second S is sickness. If you have any physical illness, it can make you not to do anything. Whether mentally, physically, it can make you not to do anything. And the last S, with COVID, we saw the outcome. Schooling and working. Homeschooling, remote working. To the extent that children were taking themselves off Zoom and Microsoft Teams and putting reconnecting, children were tired. Children were tired. Mommy, my eyes are paining me. My neck is aching me. So what is your stress factor that is making you not to do more? Check the S, the T, the R, the E, the second S, and the last S. And for us to round this up, because I'm a streaker of time. I don't want to go out of time. That's why I say, follow me on my social. I don't understand. What will you gain if you don't follow me? The last is she can. I can't leave this stage without giving you an acronym for she can. We saw the item and let this be the emotional item. She can. That is what can make you do more. The S is set boundaries. Ladies, set boundaries. Stop saying yes to everything. You are not ninja jollof rice. Neither are you chocolate. No. The more you say no, the room you give for your true yeses. Set boundaries. It helps you to do more. What is the H? Health. Please don't neglect your health. Women are twice more depressed than, women, than, than men. And women that are married, that are on this forum, you are even more prone to depression than the single women. And why is that? If you have three children that are 14 years below, do you know those, of, those people that have traveled without a helper, a partner, they are just going to parent in a different environment. When you travel, it's stress. Don't let your husband say, I'm going to buy a ticket. You and the children will travel. It's a lie. My daughter is here. She knows. I say, I'm not traveling if you are not traveling with me. I don't No, which money? I have, I, me too, I have money. I, I'm not going with you. No. 
because you are going to go and stress yourself the more. So please, take your health very importantly, physical and mental. The E, in this E, there are three E's. Elevate, encourage, elevate, and empower. Not only yourself, but the people around you. As much as possible. Try as much. Encourage yourself and encourage people around you. You are nothing without people. It's, you are not an island. You are a whole, whole human being. I will tell people, you are nothing. So, encourage, elevate, and empower. She, she can. So, what is the C-A-N? C is connect. Connect with the right set of people, the right group. Let the right people be in your inner circle because your circle of influence influence your values. Your values influence your decisions. Your decision influence your result and your result influence your outcomes. If these things are not going, check it back. Why are my outcomes like this? Why are my actions not working? Why are my decisions not working? Why are my values infected? Because your circle of influence, there's a deficit. Connect with the right set of people. A is ask for help. It's time to sorrow, it's okay. <laughs> Asking for help is never a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. Ask for help. Say it loud and clear. I need help. Because the most dominant emotion for this year and beyond will be called, is called languishing. A lot of us are not depressed, but we are not flourishing. And languishing is a neglected middle child of mental health continuum. Are you flourishing? But you know you are not depressed, but you are languishing. Check yourself. So connect with the right set of people. Ask for help. The last but not the least and why we are here, you took time to fill that form to come here, is network. That was why before I started my discussion, I've networked with my other speakers. And I will go there because for every morning, wake up, dress up, and show up. Very key, very important. But never you neglect yourself because you are your own biggest asset. If you don't take care of yourself, you will burn out. You'll be useless to yourself and you'll be useless to others. So ensure you are emotionally bankable by making sure that you have adequate hours of sleep. Do the right exercises, 30 to 45 minutes brisk work. It will help boost your endorphins. And to help you manage your anxiety, fear, and mind cases of depression. Eat right. COVID can boost your immunity. When you go to the bank, you that deposit or you make withdraw. So begin to start depositing the right things in your emotional bank so that you can be emotionally bankable. Because if you don't have it, you can't give it. And never you operate from a place of deficit. My name remains Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadri. Thank you so very much.